So it's interesting. I was initially planning to go through Zen 4 Threadripper performance as the main story that I covered this week before I went into a turkey coma. But as luck or really Intel's misfortune would have it, it was reports from my Intel and OEM contacts about Meteor Lake that hijacked my main focus this week. Indeed, as exciting as it should be to watch AMD have a proper return to HEDT with Threadripper, what I was hearing about Meteor Lake was just far more shocking and important to cover, in my opinion. And I actually have a lot more to say about recent statements out of Intel on Meteor Lake 2 that, if anything, entirely backs up what Intel's partners have been telling me over the past month about Meteor Lake's competitiveness or really lack thereof. But first, I do want to start with my thoughts on Threadripper. And yeah, I want to be clear about something. I wasn't intentionally ignoring Threadripper 7000 in that last Broken Silicon episode, actually. It's just that I was actually given fair warning that it wasn't going to really matter to consumers or to, well, to the companies that make the products for Threadripper. You see, if I want to know when the review embargo is, I can either bother a bunch of my colleagues who do get talked to by NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel, and hope they tell me, or I can reach out to a bunch of partners. I usually try to do that first and not bother my peers. And when I reached out to contacts at motherboard manufacturers and at retailers, well, they told me that this wasn't a launch to watch. If I put these quotes on screen, a motherboard source literally told me, who cares? Threadripper doesn't matter to us anymore. This person wasn't even keeping tabs or bothering to remember or follow up on when the review embargo was because it didn't matter to the company. And then a retail source told me that from their perspective, Threadripper exists, they carry it, and that's about it. It basically makes no money for them, and they were not hearing that there was really any interest out there from their retail base, like people that might line up on launch day. No one was calling ahead of time and saying, hey, are you opening early? Nobody cared. And another retail source even told me they wouldn't even be stocking Threadripper for another week because of how little it mattered to the company. You see, I could have pestered some more people or as many people as I could that I know have review samples, but I was told that it's a waste of time and that no one cared. And in fact, if you go and look at the Micro Center's website, this is actually from a day ago, the release date of Threadripper, you can see that Micro Center only bothered to stock one CPU per store. And that's very odd. Even something like an RTX 4090, which, yeah, costs less than a lot of these Threadripper CPUs, but not all of them. They would have dozens, if not hundreds, of these graphics cards at launch. One CPU per location and not all of them selling out at first, there's very little real interest for these products. And yeah, the motherboard availability is atrocious as well. Just nobody seems to care. And well, then when I finally did decide to look at reviews for Threadripper yesterday, the hardware unboxed video really got my attention. You see, Steve, friend of the channel, basically states that his Zen 3 workstation, the previous generation Pro, didn't work long term. Basically, to summarize this part of the video, Zen 3 Threadripper Pro had such an incredible amount of issues, such an incredible lack of support, that they eventually decided at Hardware Unbox to just use 7950X3D systems instead of proper workstations. Because, well... The companies making motherboards for Threadripper just saw it as an afterthought, and so it really wasn't worth using because reliability comes before everything else. And in fact, Steve also said he ran into these issues with late-stage Intel HEDT products as well, just random like USB issues, things not working, and that again, the hardware and box team basically decided that, well, Workstation... Workstation wasn't worth using anymore, even if it does exist, because it's of so little interest to these companies that it's just not reliable anymore. And seeing Steve state that he feels Threadripper products at right now are neglected, and that these manufacturers don't even really want to support them, and then me talking to these manufacturers and hearing them directly say, yeah, we don't care about these products, I can't help but go say that, look, 
it makes sense that there's Threadripper Pro. It makes sense that there is a platform that takes an Epic CPU, makes it a little cheaper, clocks it faster for those people that want a $10,000 workstation. But it doesn't really make sense to try to upsell any prosumer into a platform with $5,000 CPUs unless it is that full Pro workstation. If someone has $5,000 for a CPU, they probably have all of the money for the full Pro workstation. And this non-Pro lineup here, it's going to have such a small user base that it's not worth supporting. It needs to have less features, but more than standard AM5 and still be cheap enough so there's a user base worth supporting. And what is that? What would that look like? Well, I'm old enough to remember what HEDT used to look like. It used to be that you'd get maybe 50% more cores, maybe double the cores or so compared to desktop, and then you'd also get maybe 50% more or double the I.O. Not over 100 PCIe lanes, but definitely more than a standard platform most consumers would need. And that way, maybe instead of having $5,000 CPUs and $1,000 motherboards, maybe you'd have $1,000 CPUs and $600 or less motherboards. And I think that's all prosumers really want. You know, otherwise, even someone like Steve at Hardware Unboxed, who has the money for sure to get a workstation, is going to go, it's just not worth the money and it's not worth the bad software that he says he's gotten from both Intel and AMD because of how small the user base is. Let's just go with Ryzen. That's what I'm saying here. I believe that eventually what AMD really needs to do is have a Threadripper series on AM5. And I've already leaked that AMD can, if they want to, launch a 24 or really even a 32 core on AM5. And I think that's enough. AMD, all you need to do is launch a, you know, maybe it's $1,000, maybe it's $900, maybe it's $800. I don't know. Launch some sort of 24 or 32 core product that can share a lot of the software stack of the other AM5 chipsets. And then you launch some X690E or X690W E that maybe has just another 20 PCIe lanes. I don't even think all of those additional 20 PCIe lanes needs to even be PCIe 5.0. What you just need to do is go from having like a time 16 PCIe slot with for this example on screen here of a motherboard that's X670E and a times four slot to just two time 16 slots. And then instead of like four M.2 drives, make it so you can support six M.2 drives or whatever combination of you want with a little bit extra SATA and USB. That's all I think people want. A prosumer wants the ability to have a lot of storage, but they don't need to have 20 drives. And they want to be able to have multiple time 16 slots, but they don't need to have four time 16 slots of 5.0. That's just overkill, and it's too expensive to really make work supporting by these companies. Now, to be fair, all roadmaps I have still suggest that AMD is likely to cap out at 16 cores on AM5 with Zen 5, and I see no reference to some ultralight HEDT chipset for AM5 for Zen 5 at the moment. I'm not saying it's going to happen. What this video is about is saying what I think this market actually needs, and I can't help but think that if this doesn't happen... Threadripper might die because nobody wants to spend that much more than a Ryzen platform unless they're just going to go for Epic or Threadripper Pro anyways. And uh, yeah, I don't need to really evaluate performance. It's mind-watering multi-threading and it's crazy. But it's so expensive, no one cares. And so I don't think I need to talk about it any more than I just did. But what I do need to talk about soon is a leak of a 64-core Xeon W3595X that actually might not be pointless compared to Zen 4 Threadripper and also some myth-busting of Meteor Lake statements made by Intel recently. But first, an ad from Micro Center. Micro Center is having a Black Friday sale right now, and you can support Moore's Law is Dead by going to the links in the description and clicking on those and checking them out. Additionally, they have a new Creelty Ender 3 S1 3D printer for only $199 right now for new customers. And actually, you don't even need to be a new customer for this next part. They're opening a new store in Charlotte, North Carolina in 2024. And whether you're a new or old customer, if you go there, they'll just give you a free flash drive. And on top of that, if you go to that Charlotte or any micro center for that matter, 
and you do a build and take some pictures of it, they will just give you $25 off again for sending them pictures. And they're always giving you insane deals, like crazy prices on the 7800X3D and discount Rocket uh, Raptor Lake products, in addition to giving you free RAM with a lot of these things. So go to Micro Center if you're doing a new build this holiday season. I legitimately do recommend them and think now is honestly a good time to do a build. If you go to Micro Center, they'll have the best prices. They'll give you free RAM half the time. They'll give you $25 off for submitting a picture. And it's really the place to go if you can. Support Morris Law is Dead by clicking on those links and checking out Micro Center today. All right, let's not waste any time. I want to get right to the leak of Intel's upcoming Sapphire Rapids refresh series that actually might be able to hold its own niche in the workstation market next to Zen 4 Threadripper. So if I put this on screen, this comes from one of my best sources when it comes to these types of leaks out of Intel. This person told me that they just got confirmation that the Xeon W3500 and W2500 SPR refresh products well, they unfortunately won't launch, our, like Intel will call it a launch, in January or February, and they won't really have availability until late February or March, but there is some good news about the pricing and performance. I am told that whatever the final performance comes out to with these basically Emerald Rapids workstation parts, that they will be priced to win in price performance against Zen 4 Threadripper, and that the overclocking beyond 5 gigahertz is now much easier with less thermal issues, and, well, that base clocks, they are still lower than Zen 4 Threadripper, but they are substantially higher before. I mean, I think that they should get to around 2.6 gigahertz base clocks, which, again, isn't crazy, but before they were sub-2 gigahertz, if you look it up, and that the W2500 monolithic SKUs, these are the models that are just not multi-tile or anything crazy. They're like a monolithic, like 26 core. They'll be far tamer to play around with compared to before. And so you should expect to be able to get one of these like 26 core. I believe that's probably where it will top out. I know they can go, I think, up to like 30 cores, but I think it'll top out at 26 cores with the W2500 series. That you should be able to clock all of the cores to much higher clock speeds than before without consuming a thousand watts. They're not going to be efficient compared to Threadripper. That's, it, that's not what I'm saying. But I am told they should be less ridiculous. And in fact, the top non monolithic model, the W3595X. I'm told that's going to come with 64 cores. And when you add all of that up, that means that, well, if they can at least price the 3595X with per core pricing parity with AMD, then they can offer a 64 core against AMD 64 core that might actually be better at gaming. I know this isn't for gaming, but Gaming in some ways is a proxy for other mixed workloads as well, and it seems like this might be something Intel may be able to hold their own against AMD. I gotta be clear though, I'm saying it seems like it might because, well, <laughs> Intel's idea of <laughs> reasonable thermals and good pricing is often very different from mine. So I'm not gonna double down on, you know, Sapphire Rapids Refresh Workstation being some major winner yet. Until I see the reviews, I will reserve judgment because what Intel people get excited about is often not the same standards as what I get excited about when it comes to efficiency and pricing. But it is sounding kind of good. And I think that's a welcome development in the HDT space because when I see the pricing of Threadripper products for Zen 4, I understand they're reasonable compared to Epic, but they're still really high. And it would be good if there was some continued competition there. So both companies have to keep innovating against each other. So we can get back to a more reasonable HEDT competition space compared to, well, what we've had recently, which is basically nothing. And all right, let's get to the final thing I want to talk about today. And that is unfortunately Intel Meteor Lake again. I won't dwell on it too long, don't worry. But I do need to touch on some public statements Intel's been making that I think... Well, that I think don't bode well for this lineup. And I have to start with Tom Peterson, which for those who don't remember, this is one of Intel spin doctors that they use to try and grift ARC to PC gamers. This is someone who said things like this before ARC launched. How do we convince our community of gamers that you can trust us? Based on what we know right now, I have a very clear date of when I expect this to be on the shelf. I just can't share it with you because I don't want to. I don't want to disappoint people if it changes. Okay. So at the end of the day, I would say both sooner than you expect, and not uh, not that far away from my perspective. Yep, he's back to talk about Meteor Lake, which I would say just right there is a bad sign. 
especially because when he talks about it, he's sometimes comparing it, not to Raptor Lake, but apparently to Alder Lake or even Tiger Lake graphics. Now, I know right now, right when I said that, a bunch of people are getting ready to type angry all caps comments saying, Tiger Lake and Alder Lake and Raptor Lake all have the same integrated graphics. Okay, well, if that's true, doesn't it sound better to go, we're doubling graphics over previous gen, than to say, we're doubling graphical capabilities, doesn't even say average performance, over stuff that launched years ago. Why would they do that? Well, anytime a company is weird about their wording or oddly vague, that wording, that vagueness, that's always done for a reason. And I believe the extra boosts and clock speeds that Intel has made over Tiger Lake and Alder Lake are enough that they wouldn't be able to really claim they doubled performance, at least not in enough scenarios that they feel comfortable doing that. And they're doing this, well, they're doing this to cover their ass, comparing it to an older product than they really have any right to. And it has to be for a reason. And I think I know what that reason is. Well, I looked up what the performance of Tiger Lake integrated graphics would look like compared to Phoenix, and just imagine if this was doubled, and you can see that a lot of the time Phoenix is over double the performance of Tiger Lake, and even often over Alder Lake, and so at same power, I think there's a solid chance that Meteor Lake doesn't even beat Phoenix. And then remember, Meteor Lake is not competing with Phoenix, it's competing with Hawkpoint. Now, I want to be clear, I know that it does sometimes get over, uh, when I say it, I'm talking about Tiger Lake or Alder Lake graphics too, sometimes get over half the performance of Phoenix, but I can also find examples where they get below half. And in fact, if you see any time spy scores show up with uh, Meteor Lake and it looks good, that's one of those applications where Intel integrated graphics tend to overperform. And so I'm forced to conclude that if Meteor Lake does beat Phoenix on average in games, it's not going to be by a notable amount. And I think they know it. And they are also just covering themselves in case it doesn't beat it at all. Which, look, again, I think Meteor Lake will look good in some scenarios depending on how you portray it. I'm sure there will be some types of applications, some types of lower usage workloads where Media Lake has really low power usage compared to the competition. But I've also leaked numerous benchmarks showing that it doesn't seem to be that much more efficient than last gen. It doesn't seem to be raising peak performance over Raptor Lake at all from what I'm hearing, or if it is, it's very small amount. And well, I guess I'll just close on my sentiment towards Meteor Lake this way. If this launched over a year ago, before Phoenix especially, I think it could have been a cool product. You know, it would have looked like a next-gen architecture that does cool things. But launching after Phoenix, really next to Hawk Point, well, one of my OEM contacts directly compared Meteor Lake to Whiskey Lake. Now, if you're forgetting what Whiskey Lake is, well, you'd be forgiven. It's just a rebrand of KB Lake R or something. It's really a nothing burger of a generation that barely raised performance. An OEM contact of mine, a senior one actually, at one of Intel's biggest OEM partners, told me they see Meteor Lake like Whiskey Lake. It's not to say Whiskey Lake was bad, but all of this new tile tech and new nodes and all of these delays, and they're comparing it to a, one of those 14 nanometer refresh generations on laptop everyone forgot. I can't help but think that is not the sentiment Intel was hoping for out of their revolutionary new architecture. But I guess we'll just have to see. I still reserve some apprehension to completely say it's going to be a complete disaster, but I just got to say the stuff I'm hearing behind the scenes is covered on The Last Broken Silicon does not sound good. And the stuff Intel's saying publicly right now it's starting to feel real griftery to me. And like, they won't directly tell you how it performs. And that's, that's always a bad sign. But outside of that, I really don't have anything else to say in this video. And so, well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to subscribe, ring the bell button so you don't miss upcoming content. Content. Uh, the next guest of Broken Silicon coming out next week will be James Pryor, one of the brainchilds of Threadripper, that this person helped segment and market the original Threadripper, and we finally have a new proper one. I want to talk to him about it, how he thinks about its pricing and segmentation. Join the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon to ask this guest questions, and then also, of course, get access to tons of exclusive ad free content like Die Shrinks. Another really big one just came out that was a lot of fun. Do not miss it. And otherwise, no matter what, enjoy your Thanksgiving. I know I will try to, and thank you for watching. <laughs>